Hey guys, Thundershot, or as you can see here, uh, Evan Brown, here to talk today about the Declaration of Independence, uh, one of the most crucial documents uh, in history. And so let's just jump right into it. Don't want to waste too much time. Okay, so America before the Declaration of Independence was founded was uh, prosperous in terms of not wealth, but a lot of farmland. Slavery was huge, which means uh, which meant a huge economic upturn for the British Empire. But around 1774 to 1775, they began the uneasiness with the lack of lack of representation uh, that America was getting in the British Parliament, which was none, uh, and how they're continuously getting taxed on tax on tax on tax of things such as tea, cotton, beer, whiskey. Name it that you were probably taxed on it, okay? Uh, which would eventually bite America back in the ass after the war, but we'll get more into that later. Uh, and but here's the thing: at the time, America wanted to stay with Britain. I know we always, uh, in history classes and everywhere you learn, you were always taught that America was always against the British Empire. America was not against the British Empire until 1776 and still there was a lot of people, a lot of founding fathers that didn't want to go to war with Britain. They simply did not think they would win the war. And to be fair, it's like saying the Maldives can beat China in a war. Okay, that was the size difference. Okay, it's like saying, for a better example I guess, other than the Maldives, uh, it's like saying Hawaii by itself could beat Russia in a full out war for freedom. Okay. That's the type of situation America was put in. And so a lot of people wanted to stay with Britain and just seek representation. And at the time, America was also trying to build itself up. Uh, you have people like Thomas Jefferson building universities, George Washington building up armies. Hamilton trying to establish a, a lot of different things as well. And so, yeah, America at the time was just seeking to build itself up. They weren't looking for a fallout war. It's to be represented within the British Parliament, which obviously King George III did not want for a lot of different reasons, which I'll talk about in the next couple slides. Now, the events that took place before. Uh, now, Lexington and Concord uh, was one of the few battles in the American Revolution before the Declaration of Independence. Uh, there was two towns uh, within Massachusetts uh, where there was some skirmishes uh, for, with Americans and British troops. It's essentially the reason it happened was because America wanted to show that it was willing to die for the ideology of freedom. Uh, so they fought and they fought, they fought hard. Um, there was casualties on both sides, but it showed King George that America was ready to go bloody if they needed to win the war. And at this point, America hadn't resorted to guerrilla warfare, uh, which we would see later in the war. Uh, they were doing the simple lineup, sh one side shoots, other side shoots, and then reload, 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 shoot, re shoot, reload, 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 type of thing that we rarely see, if ever see. Uh, and so King George III, however, was still refusing to allow representation of Americans in Parliament. This is one, because it would show that Britain was weak and would be able to be succumb to requests of such a small colony. Uh, Britain, at this time, never had the sunset in their empire. And so if they allowed an uprising and allowed America within, within the British Parliament, it would have showed to places like India, China, uh, most of Europe, that they would be willing to just give up a slot in the parliament and allow America a voice, which would have caused a lot of uprising in those countries, which however would eventually still happen, but America was kind of the trendsetter, right? The hipster, if you will, of uh, revolt against Britain. And so, obviously King George could not allow that if Britain wanted to keep their power within the world. Uh, and so, after another big issue was British troops refused to listen to the demands of Americans. They were being, they were quartering houses, they were raping people, they were killing anyone. They were doing whatever they wanted to because their leader 
had complete control of the American colonies. They could do whatever they wanted. Uh, which we would still see a lot of the same, what we now consider war crimes in in Churchill's rule as well. Uh, we like to see Churchill as this big, like, big uh, freedom fighter character, but he, uh, oh, he, he was racist. He allowed the killing of black people like it was nothing. This is simply because they were black. Uh, he allowed his troops to rape a lot of people, but that's a different video. Different topic for a different video. Something you probably have read about recent events. All right. Uh, more focus back on the Declaration of Independence was the drafting of it. Uh, the Philadelphia Convention is where they chose the people to help draft it, uh, which was the people they chose for the Committee of Five. We'll get more into what they did uh, in next slide. But anyway, the drafting of it took place uh, in Philadelphia uh, because it needed to have a turnover really quick. Uh, after back and forth with the Philadelphia Convention, the Committee of Five would eventually introduce the final draft of the Declaration of Independence. And now more on who and what the Committee of Five are. The Committee of Five were the five people tasked with drafting the Declaration of Independence. Surprise, no, Thomas Jefferson was not the only one to draft the Declaration of Independence. He was important. He was the one who put pen to paper. All right. Uh, it was five different founding fathers, uh, and the most notable ones being John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Roger Sherman, Robert L. Livingston, and Benjamin Franklin. Those are the five people tasked with drafting the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and even though they had the back and forth with rumors and scandals, uh, that there was a subcommittee within the Committee of Five to discredit Roger Sherman and Robert R. Livingston, uh, those were quickly diminished by John Adams. Although, jo although the controversy was about John Adams, uh, I had no right to believe you or lie about this, and although we rarely hear about Roger Sherman and Robert, Robert R. Livingston in history class and or ever learned about him, uh, them, uh, we currently in my own research, uh, the documents produced to me uh, make it seem that there was no scandal or sc real scandal within the Committee of Five, it was just rumors uh, quickly managed by John Adams himself with a letter. Uh, so, you know, after like a month of drafting it, here, it's about a month of drafting it, because uh, they started in June, uh, about mid-June, like early to mid-June, uh, and back and forth, it was ratified in the Philadelphia Convention of July 4th, 1776, Although it wasn't fully signed by every colony until August 2nd, this is mostly due to New York's lack of uh, presence at the Philadelphia Convention uh, at the time because of a little bit of inner, inner turmoil and not being able to uh, be presented there. Uh, even though notable name Alexander Hamilton was there, he wasn't there until much later. A uh, <laughs> little bit of a... Hamilton, fun fact, he was actually at the Philadelphia Convention as a junior delegate, who at that time helped found the National Treasury, which got into a big, big thing, which if you listen to Hamilton, you know, but maybe I'll go into that in another video, but this video is purely about the Declaration of Independence. Um, there was immediate impact. The British almost immediately, with a snap of their fingers, accepted this Declaration of War. That's what this was. It was declaring war on Britain. It passed 13 grievances. Uh, which, in case you didn't know, there were certain grievances in the Declaration of Independence that basically stated, hey, King George III, you're a bad leader, we don't like you, get the hell out, uh, and we are willing to die for that. That's what that, that's what it was. Uh, but it also established a new ideology of freedom in the world that we still see today. Uh, we would see revolutions past the, past the American Revolution, such as the French Revolution, the uh, revolution of China, the revolution of India, uh, with all the, the same ideology that we would see uh, in the Declaration of Independence and the American Revolution. The American Revolution was basically the forefront of what revolution should be like and what you should be really fighting for, right? That's why America is 
Kafka Kof in almost every revolution in the world currently, and has a hand in almost every third world country. Uh, <laughs> but America would, at that time, become the father of modern day freedom standards. It set a new precedent, it set a new ideology within the world that America was not just going to kneel down to this war, this essentially god of the world, because he could do whatever he wanted. He simply just said, nah, screw that, we are free. Okay, we're going to use the spirit of 76, which is the spirit that America is a free country to allow that. And so, and we still see the effects of the Declaration of Independence today, such as ha the Hong Kong protest with waving flags, American flags, and saying, why isn't the leader of the free world helping us in our revolution? Uh, which has caused a lot of turmoil within America and Hong Kong. Because China's, if you don't know about Hong Kong, China's trying to take it over, and it's a whole different, it's a whole mess, uh, in a geography sense. Uh, and the protest is still happening, right? It's been months and months and months of protesting, and Hong Kong is just refusing to let down, and that's an ideology in the Declaration of Independence that Hong Kong saw and took for their own. Okay, maybe use it better, because America has not always been a free country. It's not always been the top notch in freedom. Right? We have the Cuban Missile Crisis. We have the invasion of Vietnam where they're trying to get free from France. Right? Uh, so it's clear that America has not always been the best, but America's always had the spirit of freedom. Even though we may not always see it, there's always Americans who are proud to be American and will always try their best to be free. Uh, and so, hopefully this uh, video uh, showed you more information about the Declaration of Independence. I kind of went quicker than I would in, uh, let's say, my research project I did on it. If you guys want to take a look at that, there will be, the there will be a link in the description below. And because it is on an old school account, it may or may not be up right now. So if it's not, let me know in the comments and I will simply re-upload it. Uh, so hopefully this kind of gave you guys a better overview of the Declaration of Independence and the impact it had on modern day society. Uh, I would have gone a lot more in depth, but I didn't want to bore you guys with hours of details and useless information. So hopefully you guys like this kind of video. Uh, I will be trying my best to uh, make more content and upload a couple videos today. And so. It's fun shot signing out. Hope you guys enjoy.